Hey, welcome back to Guardbeardia. <laughs> Neckbeardia signed off on the name and even gave me the idea and some of the comments did as well, so I guess this is where we are now. Today I've come to you with the next chapter of the Veil vale Riders. I hope you enjoy. The formation of Veil vale Riders walked in infantry columns down a well-cut dirt road. There were a wide variety of boots crunching on the gravel as they moved. They had decided while en route to the village to perhaps not spook them by walking up and out of the forest all of a sudden and take a more direct and open approach down a road they knew existed thanks to the labors of Gremlin. While one Veil Rider had their suspicion of germs and possible fantasy diseases, Yule and Coco didn't really have a worry in that regard. As it was more than likely these people, or the people of this land, had many ways to cure the ill and any kind of sickness. After all, these were elves. They weren't walking into a goblin stronghold or something, or getting shot with shit-covered arrows. As far as Yule was concerned, it was actually quite nice, going for a walk after being cooped up in Fort Kickass for all these weeks. And to hear the wind rustling through the leaves of trees was bringing up memories of his birth state of Oklahoma. While Yule and some of the other Vale Riders walked with rifles low and enjoying the overall ambiance, others walked at the low ready, as if expecting a dire wolf to lunge out of the woods around them and drag their body into the brush for a snack. Yule told the Vale Riders while on the way out they needed to be as calm as possible and walk as if there wasn't a threat. The last thing he wanted was for the elves to perceive that they were stalking along the road and not actually walking out to greet them and make contact. Hours passed on in relative serenity before Yule began to notice a severe lack of traffic on the road, and indeed, it looked like that a lot of the wagon ruts and runs were extremely old with very little new tread or marks on the surface at all. He pocketed that information in the back of his head. As ahead of them was a few scattered outer buildings that seemed to be just beyond the edge of the trees. Yule sniffed, flicking his rifle over his shoulder, but still keeping his M9 well at hand and off safe. Smiles engaged people, let's not cause a ruckus with the locals. The Veil Riders walked out into the sun, the bugs buzzing around them, and honest to god grasshoppers burred and flew away from their approach onto the open road to the village. It took a matter of minutes for the elves of the town, definitely a town you'll thought, to become highly aware of their presence. Well, one elf anyway, in the beginning. The second building they passed had a little girl sitting outside near a very ornate wooden gate and a large golden colored dog in front of her. She was cooing at it in her language, and the dog seemed to be soaking up the attention. When she heard a noise and looked up, she locked eyes with Yule and the five Veil vale Riders who were around him. For the first time in who knows how long, Terran and Fantastical looked at each other eye to eye. The little elf girl tilted her head, and Yule took off his hat giving a slight bow to the girl, his curly hair falling down around his face. The dog growled at the strange smelling men and women, but the little elf girl smooshed the dog's cheeks and talked to it in a stern manner. When she was sure the dog wasn't going to rip off the strange man's leg, she hopped up and bowed slightly back to Yule. Yule smiled, and the little elf girl smiled back. Yule couldn't help but chuckle a little. It was so odd seeing an actual goddamn elf in real life. Their flesh looked just like his. She even had little freckles on her face. And her eyes had just the slightest fey almond shape to them. The calm was broken by the sound of breaking pottery. And the formation's eyes snapped up to see Mama Elf standing in the doorway. The floor of which looked to be covered in some kind of pinkish water. There was a long pause. The little elf girl looked from Yule to her mama. While the dog, sensing the tension, loudly lapped at his genitals. After all, what better time for a self-lick than the tension of death and destruction? Chicks popped her head up around the gate and gave her best cheery smile and wave while saying hi. Everyone's eyes snapped at Chicks, who gave a nervous chuckle and slowly bent her fingers down and shrank slightly from the number of gazes being pointed her way. The little elf girl waved back and mimicked Chick's high with her own. 
showing a lot of teeth as she did. All the female veil riders cooed and awed at her, while the rest of the male veil riders were wondering where Papa Bear was in all this. The mother elf made no moves, but glared at the veil riders and kept motioning for her daughter to come inside. Uh, let's move on before the uh, elf mama decides to cast a spell on us. The veil riders gave a short laugh before the formation began to move onwards down the road. And one of the veil riders near the rear set down a small pack of dehydrated coffee in a protein bar near the gate of the home. When the last veil rider was well away, the mama elf ran out and snatched her daughter up like a hawk and dragged her inside, leaving the dog to sniff curiously at the small packages the foreigners left behind. I don't want to worry you guys, Yule began, looking over his shoulder, but this may have been a stupid idea. The Veil Rider team strode right into the middle of that town, right where a small fountain and park lay, and all those Terrans were quietly thinking of ways to get back at Yule in case they survived this. The villagers of this elf town had more or less made a large ring around them, and were talking very busily amongst themselves. Coco had made sure to get as many language speakers as possible in this group, but none of them were picking up on what these elves were speaking. Alright, uh, try to avoid looking scary. Be like the penguins, boys. Just smile and wave. The Veil Riders who got the reference glanced at Yule almost annoyed, but did their best to smile and wave at anyone they could. The female Veil Riders were awestruck by the amount of pretty men in the crowd, while the males were quite pleased to see the rumors about elves and their beauty was indeed true. Yule told the group to take a knee and rest, while he and Coco remained standing. Yule looked over at Coco. So how long till the chief or mayor shows up, you think? Probably as soon as he puts on his favorite necktie. Coco stood on his tiptoes and tried to peer around for a split in the crowd, but found none. Hey, 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 quit giving away your shit. We don't know if we'll need that here soon. Yule barked at a veil rider trying to hand away an entire MRE and threw his hat at him to get his attention. This is an elf village, not a gaggle of mud huts in Afghanistan, all right? For the most part, the interaction was going okay. The elves are doing a lot of pointing and behind to hand talking, while the Veil Riders were openly winking and flirting with just about anything that had a bodice or their clavicles showing. It was around the time Chicks was taking selfies with a group of male elves that the apparent governor finally arrived, surrounded by what looked like a guard retinue of some sort. Coco nudged Yule, and Yule squinted slightly. The honor guard was wearing a strange form of intricate Lelimer armor that looked very silvery instead of the usual tint of steel, and deep maroon gamisons underneath that armor. Curiously, they wore simple soft hats that were cocked to the side in a rakish fashion, and a skirt of plates with trousers underneath. They carried simple spears and a triangle-shaped shield that seemed to be more for fashion than a workhorse. But with elven craftsmanship, there's no telling what kind of stuff they shoved inside that wood to make it stronger. These motherfuckers got some style. Yule laughed, tipping his cap back, while Coco whistled and clapped at the guards. Real shame they're knife ears, though, Coco retorted, and ran his fingers along his ears while grinning wolfishly at them. The elven guards smirked slightly, and their eyes crinkled with humor. Some things just translate seamlessly between soldiers, no matter where they are from. The governor opened his arms in welcome to Yule and Coco, and spoke in his native elven language to them. The two Veil Rider commanders held their hands over their ears and shook their heads slightly. The governor seemed crestfallen for a minute, before putting back on his smile and waving them over to a slightly smaller building near the inn. The troop of riders walked behind their co-commanders, who walked beside the governor, whose own guard walked behind him. The governor was pointing out things to Yule and Coco, who politely looked and made appreciative noises when he pointed out something particularly pretty, or some kind of architecture. Yule looked over his shoulder when he had a chance, and saw Domino and a few other Vale riders offering the elves skittles or charms. Chix was also taking more selfies with a rather handsome guard who stared in fascination at his own face. Stop it! Psst. Yule whispered furiously, waving his hands as discreetly as he could. Fucking knock it off! The Veil Rider snapped back into place, but as soon as Yule had turned around, one of the elven guards held out his hand, and Domino plopped more Skittles into it. 
The walk to the governor's building was short, and the crowd of elves slowly followed the entire time, chattering to themselves in their elven language, which reminded Yule of when he would get pedicures for his feet. Wearing boots all the time does take its toll, and the women running the place would talk aloud in their mother tongue around him, and about how disgusting his toes were. The interior of the building was lavish, and both spartan at the same time. There were no silken curtains or velvet cushions, but a lot of carpenter-made furniture and simple chairs or seats. What made it lavish was the amount of work that went into the design and carvings of almost everything in the room. From the large desk that lay scattered with papers to the little side table in the corner, everything had what seemed like hours upon hours of finely detailed and intricate carvings done into every surface except the areas that were supposed to be a seat or tabletop. Only Yule and Coco walked inside, while the rest of the Veil Riders waited outside and schmoozed with the crowd. If their goal was to build a good rapport with the locals, they were certainly making a solid crack at it. The governor sighed happily and clapped his hands together, raising his eyebrows at both of the Veil Rider commanders. The governor himself was a very slight man, but still had a bit of a pudgy appearance around the middle despite his elvish appearance. Yule noted that with a smile. Seeing as to how no matter what race you seem to be, People in high places seem to fall victim to the spare tire of authority. Yule held out his hand to the elf, while pointing with his other hand at himself. Yule. I'm Yule. The elf took his hand and gave a little shake, while chuckling happily that Yule had introduced himself. Yule then pointed at Coco. I'm Coco. Coco held out his hand and smiled as brightly as any human being could. As soon as the elf took his hand, the boyish delight of shaking hands with a mythical creature became like a mask on his face. The elven governor placed both hands upon his chest, his ruffled cuffs shaking slightly as he did. Respin, El Elori Respin. Yul and Coco pointed at the elf, both saying Respin at the same time. The elf gestured at them. Yul, Coco. Yul and Coco bowed slightly to him, and the elf bowed back. After that, the group began to try and communicate via drawing, while also showing the governor the maps that they had brought with. The governor began to slowly draw out the village's names, a script neither of the Veil Rider commanders could read, and also what they seemed to grow. The elf drew out what looked like wheat, potatoes, a long-looking carrot, and a few other kinds of produce that they couldn't draw a parallel to. The elf then drew horses and furniture, which they both assumed was some kind of manufacturing clue as to what they made here as well. The elf then handed them the quill, and the two of them did their best to scrawl out their story, the cave, their world, who they were, and what they were here for, etc. Their penmanship looked like a newborn writing with its mouth, but the elven governor seemed to have gotten the general idea of who they were. They were at this for almost an hour. And then Yule peeked outside through the window, saw his veil riders lounging around and playing with the local elves. But the one thing he did see made him jerk open the window and bellow down below. Get that fucking M4 out of that elf's hands. For God's sakes, quit going full retard. There was some laughter behind Yule. And as he pulled his head away from the window and closed it, he turned to see Coco offering the governor some retort coffee. Oh, come on, man. We have no idea how they'll handle caffeine. Daylight began to just dip over the horizon when the formation of Veil Riders began to walk back down the road on the way to Camp Kickass. a lot of them laden with the fruits of their visit. While Yule was furious with them for doing it, the Veil Riders had managed to somehow trade with the locals, and now their pockets or day packs were stuffed with bread, baked goods, and bottles of wine. Yule also had to double check and make sure all of them still had their weapons, as they had been showing the locals what they were and even let some of them hold the damn things, which was a level of no that Yule was not feeling like going past anytime soon. Additionally, they learned a lot from the governor, as he had taken the time, between sips of coffee, to show Yule and Coco his own maps, which outlined all the other towns and cities that they were not aware of. Thankfully, they were dropped off in a rather scarcely populated area, but it seemed the further north they went, the more races and cities that cropped up. So far, 
After Yelf drew them to the best of his ability, there were more elven varieties, some kind of beast people, something that had horns, and what appeared to be an orcish-like races all over the place and were scattered around it in some semblance of territories. What raised even more questions was that there didn't seem to be any humans at all, or at least the elf didn't know of any. Later on, when the troops were walking up the little dugout path to the first trench network, they were joined by one of the collection details Yule had set up before they had gone out to see the elves. Got all your wormies and leafies? Yes, Mr. Yule. It's quite startling how similar yet different everything is. The Veil Riders held up their containers. They had been sent through the Veil earlier with the mortar. Inside were tubes of ground samples, leaves taken from trees, earthworms, insects, and even a live mouse they had apparently captured. The mouse had some kind of weird mohawk, but other than that, it looked like a regular mouse. Yule thumped down his pack near his hooch, while the others began sharing their goods with the other Veil Riders, regaling them with the stories about the town and the elves that live there. Chix was also showing off her pictures as well, and had quite the crowd gathered around her. Gremlin walked up to Yule, patting him on the shoulder to get his attention. Went as high as I could today. Seems this place is almost twice the size of our Earth if the numbers are correct. Yay. Yule groaned and slapped the papers down onto his little earth and wood field desk. He plopped down onto his little sitting area leaned back onto his bundled wool blanket and dug into a pile of folders next to him. He picked out one and flipped through it, running his finger down a timeline. Eggheads should be showing up here in about a month, but something tells me this schedule is worth only its weight as ass tissue. The next morning, the next wave of Veil Riders arrived, a complement of 60 more men and women who brought more supplies in with them as well. These lads arrived, a full three weeks early, which did confirm the findings that Cole had pushed forward, and the new arrivals were shocked to hear that they were in fact early. They also brought with them a pair of US government scientists, who raged and threatened Yule with jail time for daring to come into contact with anything local. Think of the damages you could have done. You could have inadvertently given them all kinds of infectious diseases from our planet. What if you caught some kind of rare elf cold? The oak stalk of a man in front of Yule was fuming, while Yule bemusedly sucked on a cigar and blew smoke out of his nose. He took the scientist by his shoulders and slowly spun him, until he was looking at the gigantic direwolf pelt that adorned the makeshift roof over Gremlin's computing station, the great head of it having a stick stuck in his mouth so it stayed open, exposing the huge fangs for all to see. A cold is by far the least of this world's worries, Eggy. After that, they mostly spoke to Coco and would refuse to speak to Yule due to how he treated them. They collected their samples and sent them back through the veil on an almost daily basis and would constantly bemoan the living conditions of Fort Kickass. They were mostly ignored, but the news from the other veil riders was not. According to them, the rest of the countries were putting extreme pressure on the United States, which was causing the entire country to become jittery. It was also apparently coming under harassment from the UN as well, which was making the internet fly with conspiracy theories so lavish that it almost seemed like the Cold War had come back to haunt the minds of Americans. Due to this, the US Army and Navy was bolstering every strategic location they could, this was causing a major drain on manpower that they were wanting to send over to replace the Veil Riders. A few days later, news came of the samples taken from the New World were indicators of this world being resource laden, and would be a major power component for the US, which caused every country with a magical background to jump around and try to find their own hidden veil. All it took was some rock samples being mineral rich, and now every country had a target on coal country. Hoping to keep their nest eggs safe, the US was giving the Veil Riders even more toys. A few more Veil days after the news came, the Veil became a flurry of activity as more weapons, supplies, and a complement of ATVs and dirt bikes arrived, as well as fuel to go with them. We Mad Max now was a term used a lot over the next week. And metal became the new standard of music, 
right alongside the usuals. Things were going swimmingly for that matter, as the elves came to visit a few times and were shown around the base, the scientists raving the entire while about how the Veil vale Riders are going to kill them. Despite Yule's protest, a few were even given demonstrations of the weapons, which perked up a lot of elven ears to the power of these strange men in even stranger clothing. Fuel and supplies came steadily, slowly allowing them to build a stockpile in Fort Kickass. And one day, the scientists that had come with decided to check back in person with their own command structure on the other side. They said they would be back within one day, and the Veil vale Riders walked them in made sure they went through safely, then waited. The days passed. No signs of the scientists. Even more days passed. No signs of the scientists. No more supplies either. Yule was getting suspicious, as why would they suddenly halt sending them things? A week went by, and finally there was activity from the veil. The one guard inside running out to alert Yule to the changes. Yule, finally relieved the eggs were going to come back with supplies, began walking towards the cave entrance with a few Veil Riders in tow to help unload whatever came through. It was, however, with shock that Yule stopped and gripped his pistol with his right hand. Walking out from the cave were ten men, all of which were wearing long coats and a blue helmet, on the front of which were two letters. You in. And that's the end of this chapter of the Veil vale Riders. Again, I'm sorry this took so long. Things popped up with family and I had to take care of it, but it should be all done now. We should be back on whatever schedule I have this thing on. If you like this story and stories like them, be sure to like and subscribe to Guard Beardia and click the bell icon so you know when the videos are released through the week. I'm really happy that you guys are enjoying this little original story I'm typing up during the week. It's a lot of fun. I like putting in little Easter eggs and references where I can just to, you know, get the internet giggles out and all the other fun stuff, you know, those spicy memes. And down below, as always, let me know what you think. If the story starts dragging on and being unfun, I gotta know as soon as possible so I can fix it. Because sometimes writers will get in a rut. It happens, we get in a little unfun place, and I don't want the story to be unfun. I want you guys to enjoy it at all times while you're listening to it or reading it. But until I see you next time, this has been Garbro, and I'll see y'all in the next video.